Hey guys, Chris from Adaptivation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 1 from the May 2008 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up here and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so we're going to take a little read here. The following balances remain on the trial balance of Alvin Preston, a wholesaler, after the preparation of the trading account on December 31st, 2007. So if they've done this trial balance after the trading account, you're going to see gross profit inside. You're not going to see sales or returns in, purchases, opening stock, any of that stuff, because it will be dealt with already in the trading account. So it's going to, you're going to see gross profit. And as a matter of fact, let's pull up the trial balance. And yeah, the first item you are seeing is gross profit. You're also seeing accumulated depreciation of motor vehicles, capital at Jan 1, 2007, that's the opening capital, creditors, 5,000, right? Now, cash at bank, debtors, we have drawings, office expenses. Ah, we have a provision for bad debts. Mm. Rates is an expense. Closing stock, so normally we see this in the additional information below the trial balance, but that's when we get trial balances before we do the trading aspect of the income statement. So because we've done the trading aspect of the income statement, the closing inventory will now be part of the trial balance. Okay, don't know why I did air quotes, sorry about that. <laughs> and then motor vehicles at cost and our trial balance agrees. Okay, now we have some additional notes. First one up, it says debtors included a certain bad debt of 250. Okay, so if debtors included a bad debt, remember a bad debt is a debt we can no longer reasonably expect to collect. So we're going to have to write it off. So the implication here, what it means is that that 250 amount is going to have to be subtracted or removed from the debtor's figure. And don't forget, bad debts is an expense. So that's going to go in the income statement. The second item up says the provision for bad debts is to be increased to 400. Now, it, now notice carefully, it says increased to $400. So it's not this 400 that's going to go in the income statement, it's the change. So we're gonna take a look. Let's just go real quick back up to the trial balance app. We have the existing provision of $300. So the increase to go from 300 to 400 is $100, all right? So that is the amount that's gonna go in the income statement. Now let's check out item three. It says no entry has been made in the books of account for a check received from a debtor on December 31st, 2007, made payable to Preston for 200. Okay, so we've received a check from a debtor for 200, which means the debtor is paying us back. So the debtor's account is going to go down, the balance is going to go down, and bank is going to go up. So that's going to affect the debtor's balance and the bank balance. So if we're doing a balance sheet, we're going to have to make an adjustment for that item. Okay, item four. At December 31st, 2007, Preston owed 150 for insurance. Ah, so that's an accrued expense, which we know we're going to have to include in the income statement, as well as the balance sheet. Next, item five, it says rates prepaid at December 31st, 2007 amounted to $50. Okay, so a prepaid expense is a current asset, so that's going to go in the balance sheet. And we also subtract any prepaid amounts from the amounts in the trial balance before inclusion in the income statement. And finally, okay, this is a slightly longish one. Preston uses the reducing balance method of depreciation on motor vehicles at a rate of 30% per annum. Okay, there were no purchases or sales of motor vehicles during the year. Okay, so that's going to give us the information as to how to calculate the provision for depreciation for the current year. First up, they want us to prepare Alvin Preston's profit and loss account for the year ended December 31st to 7. Right? So remember, prior to, I think, like 2011, 2012, they still referred to the income statement as the trading and profit and loss account. So the trading account was the part of the aspect from sales to gross profit. And the profit and loss aspect was from gross profit to net profit and all the expenses and sometimes the other revenue in between. But we just collectively know it as the income statement. So I refer to it as a trading section of the income statement and the expenses or profit and loss section of the income statement. So we have to do the profit and loss section of the income statement. Now, just to show you, as we hear one time, part B wants us to do a balance sheet in a vertical style as at December 31st, 2007. So you might be wondering, why are they specifying vertical style? Because the balance sheet was originally done <laughs> in a horizontal style. Assets on the left-hand side and capital and liabilities on the right-hand side. But we don't use that format anymore. But it's not to say it's not worth knowing. Okay, so let's pull up my income statement format on this side here. So, of course, please head up, right? Name of the entity, name of the statement, and the period to which it applies. I have FYE, which is an abbreviation for, for the year ended. I just 
try to save space and time where I can. Okay, so the first item that's going to go in the income statement, well, this part of it is the gross profit, which we know is given to us in the trial balance as 19,500. 19, so we're going to put that in. Now, there were no additional revenues, so we're going to go straight to less expenses. Now, according to the trial balance, the first item up, first expense up, was the office expenses. So we're going to put that in, right? That is $6,300. There were no adjustments to make, no amounts prepaid, no amounts incurred. Uh, sorry, accrued. <laughs> no amounts accrued. Okay, the next item after that was the provision for bad debt. So remember, it's not this 300 amount that's going to go in, and it's also not the 400 amount that's going to go in. It's the change. The existing provision as per the trial balance is 300. We want to increase it to 400, which requires an increase of $100. So I also like to put a little working in brackets sometimes to show how I got the figure there. Okay, the next item up. I'm seeing here is the rates item of 750. Now, if I remember correctly, note five. So note five told us about this item here. Rates prepaid amounted to $50. But you know something, I forgot an item. Let's go back to item one. It said debtors included a certain bad debt. So you see how it's important to remember and read, read over your additional information. Bad debt is an expense. I almost forgot to put it in. So let's put that in now, right? It was a bad debt of $250, okay. But now we could go back to the rates. So the rates prepaid was $50. So we subtract prepaid items. So if the rates as per the trial balance is $750, the amount that's going to go in the income statement will be $700. It will be $750 minus $50, giving us the income statement figure. Right? The next item was item four, which was the Preston owed 150 for insurance. Now, if we go up very quickly to the trial balance, we're going to see there's no item for insurance anywhere here. So it means he didn't pay any. So that full $150 has to go in the income statement. In other words, he accrued the entire amount of insurance incurred for the period. Okay, uh, Okay, and I think the last item is the depreciation. Right, so it's 30% per annum on the reducing balance method of depreciation. So under the reducing balance method of depreciation, to find the depreciation expense, we multiply the depreciation rate, which in this case is 30%, by the net book value of the non-current assets. What is net book value? That's the cost of the asset minus the, the currently accumulated depreciation before the current year's calculation. So let me show you what I mean. So up here in the trial balance, we have motor vehicles that cost $12,500. we are going to go up a little bit more till we find the accumulated depreciation existing of $7,500. So we have to subtract this $7,500 from the twelve five and then multiply that by 30%. That's how we do the reducing balance method of depreciation. So you're seeing a little work in here, 30% of the 12,500 minus the 7,500. That's going to give us 5,000, 30% of which is 1,500. Okay, those are all the expenses. The total 9,000, which when subtracted from the gross profit, will give us a net profit of 10,500. Okay, so that's part A, that's the income statement. Let's take a look at part B, the balance sheet. Okay, so in keeping with the more recent terminology, I've called it the statement of financial position. So of course, name of the entity, name of the statement, and in this case, as at 31st December 2007. Now, if you have not checked out my playlist on how to prepare balance sheets using different formats, I'm gonna put a card up in the corner there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check it out because there are different acceptable formats for a balance sheet. Statement of financial position for CSEC POA. The one they've been more leaning, what, leaning towards these past few years has been the assets on top equal to capital plus liabilities below. But they also accept assets minus liabilities equal to capital. They also even accept the working capital method. Now, I'm not going to do all, but I am going to show you two methods. And also, there's, a, there's another overarching um, classification, which is either in order of permanence, longest lasting assets first, or in order of liquidity, as in non um, assets that don't last long first so current assets first then non-current i prefer order of permanence so that's the order in which i'm going to draw these balance sheets so i'm going to show it in two ways right i'm going to show first the net asset approach assets minus liabilities on top equal to capital below and then after that i'm just going to retread the same thing and do assets alone on top equal to capital plus liabilities below okay so i said we're going to start with the non-current assets so don't forget to head up that section costs Minus. So really and truly, it should say accumulated depreciation here and NBV is net book value. I just try to keep things short and simple um, without having to expand the rules so things look kind of haphazard. But that's just me being a bit OCD. By all means, please write 
accumulated depreciation or provision for depreciation, whatever floats your boat. Right, we only had one non-current asset, which was the motor vehicles at cost, which we could see here is 12,005. So that's gonna go in this column. The depreciation. So is it going to be the 1,500 we just found in the income statement? No. Is it going to be this amount of 7,500 from the trial balance? No. Then what is it gonna be? It's going to be the sum of those two figures. The 7,500 in trial balance is the previous depreciation, all the years prior to the current year, and we've now incurred and recorded the current year's depreciation of 1500 So we have to put those two together. Trial balance figure plus income statement figure equals balance sheet figure. So that depreciation will be 9000 So you're going to have 12005 minus 9000 equals 3500 So there was only one non-current asset. So let's get to the current assets. So we start off with the inventory or stock. That's $3,000. So, we, so we're going to put that right across here. Okay, the next item up is usually debtors or account receivable. So this was a slightly older paper, so they're calling it debtors 8350. Now, we have a couple of things to do here. And yes, we are going to subtract the provision for bad debts, but not this amount of 300. We're going to subtract this amount of 400 because as the note told us, we had to increase the provision to that amount. But there are two other items that we have to adjust the debtors figure for first before we deal with the other stuff. Okay, so first up in note one, it says debtors included a certain bad debt of 250. So again, if that figure is in the 8350 of debtors, we're going to have to subtract it to take it out because a bad debt can no longer be expected to be received. And if we can't expect to receive it, we can't include it in accounts receivable or debtors. And then we also had to cater for this item down here where somebody, a debtor, paid us a check for 200, but we didn't record it. If they pay us back, the debt is going down. So we have to subtract the 250 and the 200 from the debtor's figure of 8350. So you're going to see that here, 8350 minus 250 minus 200, giving us 7900. And now from that figure, we're going to subtract the 400 provision for bad debts, and that's going to give us the net debtors or net receivables of 75. Okay, we also had a prepaid expense, the rates prepaid, this is note 5, of $50. So we're going to put that there as well. And we also have cash at bank of $100. Now, don't forget, this was 100, but remember, we received the check, the same 200 that the debtor paid us by check. We have to now add that to the bank balance of 100. So 100 plus 200 is 300. Right, so total current assets will give us 10,850. And when we add that to the 3,500 for non-current assets, we're going to get 50, sorry, 14,350. Now we're going to deal with the liabilities. Now we have no non-current liabilities and we only have current liabilities. Let's take a look. So according to the trial balance, we have 5,000 for creditors. And if we go down to the additional information, we had the accrued expenses of 150. So we're going to put those two items in. So creditors, accrued expenses, when we add those together, we get 5150, which when subtracted from the 14,350 will give us, I think, 9,200. There you go. Now that's net assets, assets minus liabilities right, is net assets. But we also know assets minus liabilities is capital, right? Remember, what are assets? The resources that the business uses to engage in business activity, to earn revenue and ultimately profit. Where do those resources come from? From, from just random places? No, we need money to buy the resources. Where does the money to buy those resources come from? From either the owner through capital or through creditors via liabilities. We've already dealt with the liabilities. We've subtracted those. So what is left, the net assets has to, the finance for the net assets has to come from the capital or the owner. So that's why it's called the finance by capital section. Now, the trial balance did give us an opening balance for capital of 4,200. So we're going to put that in here now, right? 4,200. And we're going to add net profit. So remember, in the income statement, we had a net profit of about 10,500. We add those two things together, we're going to get 14,007. And there was a drawings figure in the trial balance of 5,500. So we are going to have to subtract that figure here. And guess what? That is going to give us $9,200, right? And as we could see here, the balance of capital at end is equal to assets minus liabilities, which again, of course, is supposed to be because assets minus liabilities is equal to capital, right? So your balance sheet balances. Now, as promised, I am going to do this a second way, which is just going to involve shifting the current liabilities from where it is to the section below. So just give me a minute. I'm going to put this item on the left-hand side and do the balance sheet fresh on the right-hand side. 
Okay, so there we go. So we have a fresh statement of financial position headed up. Now again, I'm not going to go through the balance sheet in the same detail as I did before. I'm just going to show you how it looks, but I'm going to populate items one at a time. So we're going to start with the non-current asset section. Then we're going to go to current assets. So we have the stock, debtors minus the provision for bad that's giving us net receivables. Then we have the prepaid expenses and the cash at bank, giving us total current assets of 10850 which when added to the 3500 above gives us 14350 Now, assets is equal to capital plus liabilities. Assets are the resources of the business. We need money to buy those resources. Where's the money coming from? From the owner and from entities other than the owner, the creditors, via liabilities. So we're going to start with capital first, right? Because in order of permanence, capital is more permanent than liabilities. The investment by the owners, the capital invested, stays in the business and never has to be paid back. The owner is rewarded via profit. Remember, that's why people start a business, to earn a profit. So the owner doesn't necessarily take back out their investment, right? So anyhow, let me get into the section. So we have the opening capital balance of 4200 at the net profit minus the drawings giving us the same 9200 we saw in the previous balance sheet but we're not stopping there we have to add liabilities we only have current liabilities and we only had two the creditors of 5000 and the accrued expenses of 150 totaling 5150 which when added to the 9200 from above will give us 14350 for total capital and liabilities and guess what that matches the total assets figure assets is equal to capital plus liabilities and your balance sheet balances, and that's a good place to end the question. Oh, sorry, and that's the end of the question. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one from the May 2008 PUA paper two. If you have any further questions on it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you wanna check out any more videos, I'm gonna put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe, and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.